what have we here? Well, totally forgot. Um, I own this. Uh, I bought it originally for the review, if you remember, guys. Kind of brings me on to today's subject rather nicely. Homage watches. What do you make of that, Hugo? Not really my cup of tea, old boy. Oh, fair enough. Oh, well, let's get into this video. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to discuss a subject I haven't actually directly addressed for absolutely donkeys. It's been a few years. So I thought I'd discuss homages, my thoughts, and before I get into it, and I've just realised that my watch choice of the day is rather fitting for today's video. I am wearing my Tudor Submariner and I have it on the historically appropriate strap. This is a Marine Nationale. This is actually an authentic. There are a few brands that do it, but Jacko is the only one uh, that is made out of actual surplus materials from the uh, French military. It is slightly a snug fit because he doesn't do them in 18 millimeter size. This is of course the mid-size Submariner, but I've got to say it's very, very comfortable. Once you do get the, the proper adjustment, it's absolutely, uh, oh, it's, it's pure class. So thank you, Matthew, to, for sending me that. Anyway, we should really start with the definition of the word homage. It's used in a very unique fashion when it comes to watches. Usually, the, the word, uh, especially when it comes to art or literature, cinema as well, a form of imitation done out of a respect for the original. For example, uh, Francis Bacon's reinterpretation of that classic portrait of the Pope by Velasquez, or in more mainstream culture, Stranger Things is chock-a-block full of homages to 80s, cinema, not only stylistically, but aesthetically, musically, it's, it's, that's a really great example. And the reason is because it evokes a feeling of nostalgia, usually a fondness for the past. Watches, it does the same thing, uh, but it, it, the, the meaning has kind of been slightly um, reinterpreted as, as marketing and uh, somehow it's, it's come to encompass a whole genre of watches. Picasso once famously said, and he himself has been accused of, of, of ripping off uh, other artists constantly, but I mean, we cannot deny his true talent and genius. But he once famously said that every artist has a, a mother and father. You don't emerge from nothing. When it comes to watches, it's more so to do with aesthetics, we should not get confused with illegal watches that simply hijack the name of the original and put them on the dial or, the, or wherever. With movement and, and, and innovation in terms of uh, engineering, it gets a little bit more technical, but what it all has in common is that cyclical, constant evolution of ideas and successful design it's inevitable. Nature does it. Very little things are original. The Tudor, for example, a lot of people don't understand. If you saw the, the history I recently did on the Tudor Submariner, I'll leave a link to that video. They were actually developed at the same time as the very first uh, Rolex Submariners, but they held them back to allow the prestige and the, 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 the emphasis to be on the, the Rolex, the, uh, the cousin or the brother, however, however you want to describe that relationship. An important thing to remember is that homage watches are not nothing new. If you look back at the Hamilton Otis, for example, of the, of the 1940s, that was a direct kind of response to uh, JLC's reversal. Rolex Submariner itself has been mimicked many, many times. Some people even say that the Rolex was biting the style of the 50 Fathoms that predates it. Look at the chronographs of the 30s and 40s. Some of them are indistinguishable from each other. And there's a lot of debate on who was first with this feature or that feature. 
even the movements themselves and who invented the first, it's, it's hotly debated. So what makes a homage? What makes it a ripoff? What makes, you know, it's, it's, it's such a complex issue and that is why it is constantly debated every day. You'll find it in every forum. So rather than discussing the virtues of a homage watch, because we all know about you know, the tremendous value they, they can offer, especially of tributes of very rare pieces or extremely expensive pieces. So I thought I'd go through the forums, and this was rather entertaining, and pick out reasons, five reasons why you should not buy a homage watch and see if there's any validity or, or any actual truth to it. Um, so here we go. <laughs> Well, I've heard this a lot. People say that homage watches are a waste of money and you should save up for the real thing. It's very easy to say that. There is an element of truth to that. For example, I, I'm, I'm really lusting after a royal oak. I don't think I'll be buying an homage to it because I haven't found anything that gives me that feeling yet. I do intend to save my money. Well, last, <laughs> I just splurged out on, on, on some watches. But anyway, that's, um, you know, I have this channel, it's slightly different for me. But if you are saving, if you do have a habit of splurging on homages and then selling them, then maybe that advice is practical and applies to you. But however, most people out there, they buy a few watches and that's it. They just don't see the justifications in spending 20 grand for, a vintage 1655 Steve McQueen Rolex Explorer 2, right? I love that watch. It's gorgeous. I would love to own one. If you have a family, responsibilities, a house, a mortgage, a blah, 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 you know, real, real world problems, and uh, well, they're not really problems, but uh, responsibilities, that's the correct word then that's the last thing you should be splint, you know, splurging your money on. It very much depends on the buyer. So especially if you just want a quick fix and you don't ever intend on, on spending that kind of money. I see a lot of people saying that it's just a lazy ripoff. It's lazy design, um, there's no originality in it. It's just companies making a quick buck from tried and tested classic design. There is an element of truth in that. Nobody can deny it. However, it's very difficult not to do a derivative design these days. It's a catch-22 because you make something too different, too unique, and then everybody loathes and hates it. Trust me, I know about this because when I review watches, people go berserk over the most min minutiae of details. This is, unfortunately, this is inherent in the watch community. Some people really should get a life. As watch enthusiasts, we tend to be very attentive to, to detail. Most watch enthusiasts are of a generally higher intelligence. That's just a trait of, of this hobby. Um, so we notice that the, the devil's in the detail. If I pull in here my NTH, this is a great example. This is what I classify a super homage. If you watch the review of this, then you'll understand what this watch actually is doing. It's a very clever, it's like a Within homage watches, there's different levels. There's blatant one-on-one -on -one copies like the Invicta, very slight differences. The NTH, on the other hand, is a amalgamation of several different references. The big crown from classic Rolexes, the case from, you know, the 57 Seamaster, the hands, obviously, snowflake hands from the Tudor, but it has also original features like the loomed crown, the super thin profile, uh, luminous bezel, etc, etc. If you don't know 50s and 60s classic watches, uh, it's forgivable. You, 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 you're, you're gonna misunderstand what this watch is actually doing. So there's variation. It's, it's, there's a lot of design. You know, uh, Chris Vale, who, who, who uh, came up with this, I really take my hat off to him. I really grew to appreciate just how much detail and how much hard work. It's a massive undertaking, not just financially, but in getting these things right. Um, and, and unfortunately, people do write watches off like this just because they see the snowflake and they think, oh, it's a, 
it's a you know submariner tudor submariner so again it, it varies really you have to judge a watch on its own um merits <laughs> Homage watches are just cheap Chinese made rubbish. If it's a shock to you that a lot of watches and micro brands and homages are made in China, then and I don't know where you, you've been, but um, this is the way the world is. If you were to take a watch like the NTH, make it within the United States, the final price of the watch would be in the thousands. It really would because you'd have to employ a workforce here, You'd have to train them, you'd have to build a factory, you'd have to invest in infrastructure, in you know, the costs of running a factory, the machinery, the materials, all of this. It would be a huge undertaking. China actually allows watches like this to be possible. And then there's a misunderstanding as well. Um, not all Chinese watch factories are of the same quality. There is high end levels like this and this is what I actually really appreciate about Dan Henry and his watches. He's a very renowned watch collector. He, he basically wanted to make watches inspired by his own collection and well it's a super homage in a, in a way but I love the fact that he went to the factory and, and, and shared the pictures on his Instagram and uh, and I address this in, in the review of his pieces. If you took the workforce out right and you put a bunch of Swiss people in there, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. That's how high-end it is. Chris Vale with, with, with the NTH, he's done the same thing. Uh, he actually shares videos of uh, the factories and, and he gives, you know, so you can see where your watches are made. And I love that, I respect that. You know, it, it's, it's being open and honest is, is fantastic. So unfortunately there is a stigma this is the way the world works unfortunately so while there is an element of truth to that as well there's there's again there's it's not just cut and dry or black and white there's varying degrees of it there's also plenty of high quality swiss made homages steinhardt is a fantastic example i've reviewed uh, two or three of them. I owned uh, one of them at one point, the very early days of the channel. Exquisitely made. Uh, Swiss movements. Their mill sub is great value for money. Do you know how much the Rolex mill sub is going for? Not only are they rare, they cost a, a ruddy arm and a leg. <laughs> a lot. You're not a real watch enthusiast if you buy homage watches. Uh, <laughs> this is preposterous, okay? Um, there seems to be this, this, this kind of notion that, oh, you, nobody's going to take you seriously, uh, that, you, that you can't appreciate the hobby and blah blah blah. It's absolute hogwash. First of all, judging somebody on what they buy and, and what they're into uh, on, on, it's, it's so superficial. It reeks of snobbery, it's, and snobbery in itself is so déclassé. If you look at the etymology of snobbery, the word, it comes from the Latin sin nobilante, which means without nobility. There's nothing as classless and déclassé as snobbery. It's elitism, it's just vulgar, pathetic. And judging other people like that and trying to exclude them absolutely ridiculous okay and I've discussed this in my uh, in numerous videos you know my views about watch snobbery just because you buy expensive things does not mean that you are better educated that you are entitled or or, or more of a watch enthusiast than somebody else I would much rather see somebody wearing an Invicta uh, what is this the uh, the pro diver and enjoying it and loving it and getting into watches and the history of horology than them not wearing any uh, watch at all and just using their phone and missing out on this wonderful thing that unites us, that has given us so much pleasure. And this notion that, oh, they're not gonna take you seriously if you're wearing a homage watch. I mean, look, if they are so shallow to judge you on what watch you wear, right, then, Quite frankly, that person is not wor worth your time. 
Who cares what other people think? I mean, since when should you give two hoots about what another person thinks about your watch choice? At the end of the day, you're the, you're the person wearing the watch and that is all that matters. And for a second, just, just look at what fuels watch snobbery. It's, well, partly it's the, the, the luxury marketing is to blame, right? Because the Swiss wanted to, to diversify, and it's a response to the court's crisis, blah, 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 so they can justify, there's a lot more profit in selling luxury watches than there is entry level watches. So of course the market, it, it kind of permeates outwards from their advertising. The other cause is just ignorance and um, kind of weakness of character. You should be taught to be open-minded and to, to, anyway. You know my thoughts, have a look back at the previous video on, on, on how to be a, a happy, well-adjusted, you know, to really get the most out of this uh, watch uh, obsession of ours. Okay, number one. Now, this is a point I really do agree with, and that is do not buy a Marge watch because you haven't shopped around, you haven't done your research. Now, I've done many, many videos. I've taken iconic watches and I've done non homage affordable alternatives precisely for this reason. There are even iconic watches that give you the same feeling. For example, the, the, the Airman, the Glycine Airman, it's an icon, it's an original design. It will actually it predates the GMT, the, 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 the Rolex um, Master GMT. I put that as an affordable non-homage alternative because it's precisely that. With the Glycine, I got some of that retro feeling. I love those watches. You don't necessarily have to go all the way. There's, there's tons of original. Seiko's the master at this. Look at the Flight Master, the, the Flighty, the SNA411. It gives you a feel of a Navi timer, but it has its own original quirks. It's, it's not a a blatant homage. It's taken inspiration, but it's very much its own thing. And it's taken me years to really appreciate its design. Do your research, have a look back at my videos, affordable alternatives. Perhaps you will find something a little bit more original that will give you that feeling that, because at the end of the day, guys, it's all about feeling. Whether you know, you're lusting after a rare watch and you just want to scratch that itch, or you're saving up perhaps and you just want to have something to enjoy until you finally get that, that satisfaction. There will always be a place for homage watches. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this particular matter. Perhaps there is a legitimate reason why you shouldn't buy a homage watch. I, I, I really can't think of one. Uh, if you have one, please do share down below. At the end of the day, guys, it's about enjoying the, the hobby. Um, it really doesn't matter what watch you're into. It's not hurting anybody. It's not breaking the law. Um, so just enjoy it. That's what it's all about. It's about enjoying these watches. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay guys, ciao. Pathetic humans. <laughs>